Joining me now, House Judiciary Committee member, Congressman Matt Gates, and Fox News contributor Sarah Carter. All right, Congressman Gates, um, I mean, at least someone has some sense in the Democratic Party, but I don't think the Democrats are going to be able to resist the urging by their so called friends in the mainstream media, and I think it's going to be disastrous for them. Well, and the real problem is there's a fundamental question in the Democratic Party about who's in charge. You got people like Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer and Jenny, Jerry Nadler who run the institutions of power in the Democratic Party, but the people actually inspire the base who run the party are AOC and Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar and Ariana Presley. I mean, so you've got the, a, a real problem because the people who can set the agendas and set the hearings aren't really the people who drive the energy of the Democratic Party. But you pointed out correctly, there was this weird feedback loop between the media and the Mueller team. I mean, the Mueller report cites the media more than 125 <laughs> times. Right. I don't know how they had time to investigate every, anything. It seemed like they were spending all their time watching CNN and you know, reading the New York Times. <laughs> right, but remember, there was never any leaking. Oh, those well, Mueller people. That, like, was, this is also that was airtight. That's my, my favorite line from this whole thing. They never leaked. But like in volume one, w where they conclude that there was no criminal conspiracy with Russia, right. the media is referenced at half the rate of volume two, where they want to spin up this obstruction theory, where they have to rely heavily on public reporting rather than their own investigative work. It's kind of like, Sarah, <laughs> when the FISA application cited the news media that had received the fake news from the people making the FISA application. <laughs> exactly. Well, the left wing or the mainstream or whatever we want to call it, media, those who reported all these erroneous lies should be ashamed of themselves and they should also be embarrassed. They were used, they were stooges for yeah. people in the Obama administration that leaked a disinformation campaign that literally targeted the president of the United States. So they were used to target the president, target his family, target the institution, and by the way, Jesse, target the American people. They should be ashamed. That is not their job. Their job is to seek out the facts, report those facts, even if they don't like President Trump. Yeah, not only were they stooges of the Obama administration, they were stooges of Russia. They mm -hmm. delivered exactly, exactly what Russia wanted, which was to sow discord and animosity uh, and make everybody question the integrity of our democratic institutions. And th they were somewhat successful in doing that. Now, we're talking about next steps, Congressman. Uh, personally, I don't think little Jerry Nadler uh, has the intelligence, the, He's the charisma, him little, by the way. right, or the uh, is articulate enough to take this torch from Mueller and and run it across the impeachment finish line. He doesn't have the credibility. He's not moderate enough, and I don't think he could sell uh, a, a not not guilty. A, uh, attempted obstruction charge the way you can sell collusion. Am I wrong? You're absolutely right. And who in America is going to believe these people? Adam right. Schiff and Jerry Nadler have been lying to the country for 22 yep. months. So what, we're going to start believing them now? And you had a very solid 90s movies reference on the five. Going after the president on obstruction in this case where he was largely set up with a phony investigation would be like charging Dr. Richard Kimball with 42 <laughs> counts of trespassing while he was trying to clear his good name in the movie The Fugitive. Yes. So, you know, I think that I'm, the I'm president so acted appropriately given analogy, the circumstances. Because I make analogies on the five. I get laughed at <laughs> by Dana Perino. I'm, I'm glad someone thinks they're good. Uh, all right, Sarah, we talked about it at the top with Dan about the next steps. Uh, I don't think no matter what is released, mm -hmm. I don't think a, 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 as damning as it could be to the Obama administration, I still don't think, I could be wrong, I still don't think the media is going to fairly and accurately report instances of abuse of power that happened in the last administration. I certainly hope you're wrong. Um, I, and the only reason why I say that is because, uh, listen, Jesse, there are going to be numerous investigations, and I don't think they'll be able to walk away from it. Once the information comes out from Michael Horowitz's report, and remember, that's, that's a very narrowed scope uh, investigation. It's going to be the FBI and the DOJ. They're going to be looking at malfeasance within both of those agencies in the department. And then we're going to have Barr's investigation, and we also have Huber. So there's going to be multiple investigations 
Republicans. We don't even know, and there may be already be a grand jury impaneled in this uh, investigation. What we've seen is an extraordinary abuse of power. I think the American people are well aware of what's going on here. And I also believe that at some point, the media is going to have to take a step back and they're going to have to assess what they've done because we have seen the ratings drop on a lot of other competitor stations enormously and people are going to stop reading those papers if they don't feel that they're being serviced uh, well with the truth. Yeah, and I mean, so, I think CNN what, lost like uh, like 30 or 40 percent of its primetime audience last week. That's right. Uh, Congressman, when you see uh, mainstream media reporters running around in the halls of Congress, you should just whisper to them, no collusion. <laughs> well, they, they're not off the hook, Jesse. One of the other little nuggets that the inspector general is working on is the corruption that existed between the media and members of the oh, FBI, right. mm -hmm. where members of the mainstream media were giving concert passes and athletic tickets and other incentives to people in the FBI to leak to them. So we'll be seeing that even before we see the inspector general's report on how this fraudulent investigation began. And I think it really informs on what is so wrong here in Washington, where People can tell lies, and then the mainstream media will carry them into millions of living rooms around the country without doing the type of fact-finding that Sarah Carter does and that really illuminated a lot of the abuses that have been laid bare for the American yeah, Sarah, people. Sarah, you did a great job. But, you know, now that you mention it, Congressman, I never got bribed with Nick's tickets. <laughs> I, you know, I never got any I never got no, any YouTube concerts. No, that's because you're not concerts. in the FBI. No, the media was doing the bribing. It was the FBI that was receiving the incentives. And so then you wonder, were people in the FBI giving truthful information, not truthful information? And then you have those very media reports cited in the Mueller report as if they're the gospel when they clearly are not. All right. That's it. All right. Congressman Sarah, thank you guys very much. Happy Easter weekend to both of you. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter to you.